Given your previous role as the head of the Business Council, there's been a lot of commentary about your appointment leading the oh, Commission yes. of Audit, and I wanted to know whether you considered whether you had any potential conflicts of interest before taking up the position. Well, other than being a great lover of Australia and our way of life and our protection of the disadvantaged, I don't think so. I should point out that three of our commissioners are respected former civil servants, three of them. And I'm an ex-civil servant from many years ago, so, so three and a half. One of them is an ex-respected minister. So we've got four against one business person on the commission. I, I, I think the balance was pretty right. And by, I might add that we had five very independent pe people, very strong-willed and, uh, and with their own views on the world. The reason I'm asking you, you specifically the conflict of interest mm. question is because in December last year, I note that that was just two months after mm. you began the audit, you took up a role as director of a firm called Reardon Capital, which finances infrastructure projects. Sure. Are you concerned that there might be the impression of a conflict of interest now that you've no. recommended, for instance, that the federal government privatise 10 public infrastructure assets? No, not really. I mean, the Reading Capital is a weeny little camp company. It hasn't raised a cent yet. It hasn't lent a cent yet. But I'm, it has big ambitions, I It has know. big ambitions, of course it does, and I wish it all the best, and I, 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 don't, I have a very minor interest in the company. Um, I think it's fair to say that nothing we've said in the Commission would help or dishelp a company like Reed and Capital. And I've been a long supporter of infrastructure. I'm chairman of West Connects as well, a, a government-owned uh, uh, company basically. So I don't think that that was all declared. And I think our recommendations on infrastructure would be almost accepted on a bipartisan basis. OK, well, finally, on the issue of political party funding, mm. you made a donation which is now claimed to have gone into a Liberal slush fund, presumably, not mm. uh, of, without your knowledge. Does there need to be, in your view, a top-to-bottom overhaul of the system of political donations across yeah, Australia? Well, yes, Emma. I mean, that, that donation I, I gave to a, a, what I was told was a legitimate um, um, a political fund. It was probably for some event I went to and one of those rubber chicken events and you know hopefully we can stop all those happening in the future to be a great relief but um, yeah I think it's time to have a review at Transfield Services our management team put a proposal to the board that we would not when I was chairman there we would make political donations to either party and the board endorsed that and I think that was a sensible thing to do I, it's a whole question I think has become quite vexatious and I probably a little bit over the top. One of the things I heard today, a suggestion was that any donation should be blind. In other words, you give them to an independent group and they put it to the party of choice and nobody knows who's given what. Not a bad idea. That might take away some of the sting. Is there any merit in going to a taxpayer-paid uh, model for election campaign uh, funding? I, worry, yeah. I mean, that means that mm. I guess it removes a perception of influence sure. peddling, whether that be from business or from unions. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There's some sense in that. Um, uh, the only problem is sort of a little bit anti-democratic and... Um, the other, th other problem is, well, it does increase the cost of the political system for the taxpayer and who knows in how... In a roundabout way, it probably does anyway when it's in the yeah. private sector. I, I, look, I do th one thing, Emma, I do agree. I think the cost of elections is getting out of hand and I think some capping there is certainly necessary. So, but I, I like the idea of a blind fund. I, I reckon that's really good. Then nobody knows who's given what and, you know, the, that sort of rent-seeking issue doesn't arrive.